A few years ago, I had the privilege of going to Assisi for my solemn vow retreat. Needless to say, it was amazing. Besides the fact that it's just a gorgeous Italian town with endless pasta and wine, it was just so humbling to be able to see the birthplace of the Franciscan movement, to see where St. Francis and Claire lived and ministered and had their conversions. On one particular day, I was praying down in the crypt of the basilica where St. Francis is buried, waiting for our mass. I sat there in silence, thinking about his life, reflecting on my own, basically what I'd done for every holy place we had visited on the trip. But there was something different about this place compared to the others. As I sat down in this tiny little chapel, I found myself absolutely astonished by the amount of people that walked through. In maybe 30 minutes that I sat there, I saw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people come to see the tomb of this man Francis. Packed so deep and moving so slowly, I felt like I was at Times Square trying to walk down the street on a Saturday night. Almost more fascinating to me than the tomb itself were the people who had come to see it. Why were they here? What did this mean to them? Why, of all the places in the world, all the people who had ever lived, did these people travel to the basement of a church in the middle of nowhere Italy to see a guy who had died 800 years ago. The more the crowd grew, the more I thought about it. Here was a man who never accomplished anything extraordinary by human standards. He was never a king who ruled a nation, never possessed obscene amounts of wealth. He made no groundbreaking advancements in science or technology or philosophy, never produced a timeless work of literature or poetry. Even in his own order, the order he founded, he was hardly the best preacher or most gifted thinker, and frankly, he wasn't even very good at managing that order. And yet, they were there. 800 years later, they flocked to see his grave. Hundreds of miles they traveled just to be in his presence, the presence of this little, ordinary man. Why? Why were they there? Why, 800 years later, do we remember this little beggar, this poor man who wore tattered clothes and traveled the country talking about Jesus. For two years, I've pondered this question, and still, I don't entirely know. Maybe it's precisely the fact that there was nothing extraordinary about him that inspires so many people. That unlike Bonaventure or Ignatius of Loyola or Catherine or Siena, people who had incredible skill beyond their peers, what Francis did seems so much more relatable, so much more attainable. Anyone can sell all that they have and live simply. Anyone can care for the poor. Anyone can live with humility and love for all, and so he gives us hope that even we who are good at nothing might one day become saints. Maybe what inspires people so much was that he was a revolutionary for his day. That in the midst of church corruption and violent crusades, when people seemed so interested in money and power, here was a prophet going against the world, reminding the world of what true Christian living looked like. Or maybe Assisi is just a beautiful place to have lunch and they got to the city too early for the reservation. I don't know. What I do know is that he inspires me. When I think of St. Francis, I think of a destitute beggar who rejected materialism and lived with the poor. A romantic who saw creation with the eyes of God and cherished everything in existence. A crazed zealot who thought it was a good idea to march into the Muslim camp and try to convert the warriors to the peace of Christ. A brother who knew that no one can or should try to go on this journey alone. But most of all, what I see when I look at Francis is a sinner who understands the mercy of God. More than most, he was acutely aware of the fact that he had done horrible things, that he had failed to love, failed to follow Christ in so many ways. And yet he was also acutely aware of the fact that God loved him anyway. While we certainly understand this, maybe even feel it from time to time, I've heard it said that Francis never truly got over the fact that God loved him, that the weight of this unimaginable gift brought him joy that never faded. He was like a child on Christmas morning, if every morning was Christmas. Which, in all seriousness, is kind of the best way to describe him, isn't it? In this one image, you capture this childlike joy of a man who was known to burst into song for no reason, just so overjoyed and extroverted that he would start singing while also pointing to the profound theological insight that, given the way he understood the Incarnation, given how he saw creation, every day was sort of Christmas for him. That, to me, is what is most inspiring about this humble saint. More than his preaching, more than his work for the poor, more than anything he ever stood for or taught, what I find so inspiring about St. Francis, and what I hope to emulate in my own life, is a love so deep for the triune God that he lived every day with unrestrained joy. 
It was this joy of being healed that led him to the lepers, joy that made him a herald of peace, joy that allowed him to accept such a ragtag bunch of men into his order and still call them brothers, joy that made every moment of every day an opportunity to experience Christ in his midst, to give everything he had been given back to God. You may not have a particular devotion to St. Francis, but I do not think that there has ever been a holier person to walk the face of the earth, nor do I think that there is a better model to follow. If you want to grow closer to God, commit yourself more deeply to a life of holiness, St. Francis may just be the model you're looking for. Which, naturally, is why I want to plug a Jesuit. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Pope Francis wrote this apostolic exhortation a few years ago called The Joy of the Gospel. It is, I believe, one of the most important pastoral works to ever come out of the Vatican, and it's a strong foundation for my own life in Christ. I go back and read it every so often because this is it. This is our life, the joy of the gospel. Everything that matters is captured in just a few short pages. And so if you're looking to capture a bit of the joy that St. Francis lived by, maybe read this letter written by a Jesuit named Francis.